Hey guys, welcome back to Blender and we're going to carry on with the, this um, beer looking glass and we're going to add some bubbles using the particle system. So first of all, we need to set up some emitters. Um, so we're going to have a plain object. Uh, I'm just going to hide for now the liquid and the foam. Just make things a bit easier for us and the lacing as well. And uh, we're going to create a new plain object which will scale down. And yeah, scale it down a bit more. Go to a top view. Drag this into our glass. Okay. Now, because our glass has a curved bottom, um, let's go over into wireframe view. Um, the bubbles aren't just going to come kind of from a flat plane at the bottom. They're going to be coming from around the edges. So. Um, I'm going to add to this a subdivision surface modifier. So subdivision surface modifier, and we're going to go for two. And now over here in, oh, wait a minute, we have to apply that first. Apply the subdivision modifier. Over here then in edit mode, I'm going to deselect the vertices around the outside edge. So we just got the inside vertices selected, which we are going to delete. So that just leaves us with a loop of vertices around the outside edge there. And now we can position this, let's just scale it down a bit, somewhere around the bottom of our glass. And what that should give us now is like a, a, a ring of, of bubbles coming up from that bottom part of the glass. So I'm just going to scale that down, make it quite small, and we fit it down there. Okay, that's all looking good. And now we are going to turn this into an emitter. Hopefully this works. So we'll add a new emitter object there. Type is emitter. Let's up the number to 4000. And we want to emit this from the vertices see how this looks right so now our things are going everywhere they're falling down on the on the ground so that's because of our gravity so we want to um, set the gravity to minus 0.05 so now there's no gravity these bubbles are just going to float upwards as you can see there but they're also coming out at all sorts of funny angles um, which we need to fix so we want them to go straight upwards. So our emitter geometry, we're going to make 0 0.1. Still coming out at a slightly funny angle, 0 0.01. And now our bubbles are coming up, like so. That's kind of what we want. Um, now, what we want to do next is I'm going to add a little bit of drag so that they don't go quite as fast. Just a little bit more. Okay, it's too much drag. Check that back. Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit of brownie in there. Only a small amount, because if we have too much of this, so this randomizes the movement. You'll see what happens if we make too much. You'll see the bubbles start kind of flying out all over the place. And that isn't really how bubbles in a glass look. If you watch them, they kind of go almost straight up. So, but we just want a little bit of brownian motion to that so that they move around just a little bit. So that's probably good for us. Um, and now we need to create a bubble object. So, 
we're going to go to an icosphere and we're going to change the metric and our size will be one millimeter subdivisions will be one we'll change this to bubble objects so that we can easily identify it later now we'll come back over to our new bubble emitter which is this bubble emitter and we want to select object and bubble object to be the object which is being emitted. We'll drag up the size of this a little bit, make it around, around 0 0.3 and we'll add a bit of randomness to the size. So bubbles coming up from there. Okay. Now the time. Um, we can add in again our liquid, so we can see that. And we want to see when the bubbles hit the top surface. So when the first bubbles reach the top. is pretty soon. Slight frame number 15. Yeah, so frame number 15. So let's say we'll make this 20 frames long. Our lifetime will be 15 frames. And our ending will be 15 frames. Let's play that. Now the bubbles don't last too long. Okay, let's make this 15. Five times 13, just gotta get these numbers just about right. So the bubbles will stop just at the surface of the liquid, so there, that's looking about right. Because if we go up to 15, they seem to be breaking the surface of the liquid. So 14.5 might be enough. Yeah, and then we can add in our foam object again. So the bubbles will just sit into the foam. We'll just make, make that 14. All right, so now our bubble emitter, we can copy it, so du um, duplicate it. So shift and, actually no, we don't want to duplicate it. I'm going to copy it. The reason being, if we duplicate it, it's going to also duplicate all of these settings. And um, we're going to need different settings because some of the um, emitters which are higher up, we need to have a, a lower life, otherwise they'll reach the top before the bubbles from the bottom have. So um, it'll be Command C, Command V to copy and paste that. So now we have another bubble emitter, which we can scale up, and it should be also just touching the sides of the glass. Then we have also have the bubbles coming from there. Right, so this is bubble emitter two. And let's see when they reach the surface. So it's here, so frame 13. So we can make the life of these 12 and the end 13. Actually, we'll make the end. 15 also. There, so now we've got the bubbles coming up from there. Okay, we'll make one more. So it will be um, Command C, Command V. Drag this one up, scale. 
Now let's see when they reach the surface. First one's going to be quite short. So we're talking here, even less, 11. 11. So the lifetime of these will be 10. Okay, now you can see these are actually coming out of the glass a little bit, which we don't want. So, make the lifetime of these eight. Or less, let's go for four. And maybe we'll add a small tangent. Mm. We'll remove some of that brownian so they go more straight up. This looks okay. Now let's go to a rendered view go from the camera. Yeah, you can see these bubbles on the outside of the glass. Also, some you know penetrating up too high there. So it's just a matter of going to the correct frame. So where you got the bubbles all kind of seated inside of the glass. So maybe frame number 10 might be good. Our lacing object still hidden. We'll just expose that again. Okay. Also rename this bubble emitter number three. We're gonna have some bigger bubbles coming from the bottom. I'm gonna randomize the size a little bit more. Emitter two, I'm gonna make slightly smaller bubbles. And emitter three also will be a little bit smaller. So you want them all to be exactly the same. And then the other thing is um, they're all kind of coming up in the same stream. So we want to rotate some of these around. So this bubble emitter here, just uh, sorry, back into object mode, uh, solid view. So these bubbles, I'm going to rotate. on the z-axis a little bit. And then these bubbles. Bubble emitter, sorry. We'll rotate this also on the z axis and this bubble emitter will rotate. Because don't all the bubbles coming from all the same place, kind of all in line with each other. So now these are coming from a slightly different angle than the others. I still need to sort out this issue of the bubbles coming outside of the glass. Um, so we can do that probably by selecting bubble emitter three. We'll scale that one down a bit, move it slightly down inside the glass. That's better. So we'll check emitter two. Uh, 
I miss it too. I think our life is too short. Oh yeah. I want to make this say 10. Probably. And 13. It's better. We'll randomize that a little bit. We don't want them all to die at all exactly the same time. Otherwise, it looks a little bit odd. Again, randomize this. Okay. Now let's go back to our camera view rendered view there and we'll play along a few frames let's see how that looks yeah so now we have our bubbles there inside of our glass looking quite cool so let's render this out and see how it looks so come over to our render here and I'm going to up the sampling, I think, a little bit um, on this one. So I'm going to up this to uh, 50, just so we get a really nice final render with these bubbles inside the glass there. So we'll hit the render button, and I'll see you in a few minutes when that's done. So our render here is almost done. You can see it's looking pretty nice. We've got these nice bubbles coming up there. There's a few errors. You know, we've got um, the, f the, the, uh, the lacing is sticking a little bit below the foam there and things, which, which are um, relatively easy for you to fix. Um, but I hope this tutorial series anyway has given you a good insight into how to set up realistic looking scenes to be rendered in, in, in Blender. Um, I've enjoyed making this tutorial series for you. Um, I hope that you've taken something from it and it's given you a good introduction to Blender and that you can, you know, now generate some kind of glass containing a liquid. Uh, it's shown you a lot of different modeling techniques, rendering techniques, texturing techniques, how to use the node editor. So we covered quite a lot in these tutorials and I think the result is really quite nice. So all we have to do now after rendering is go to save as image. And I'm going to save this as number three. This is the third render I've done. Um, so now you can kind of compare the renders that we've done as we go along. So let me get those renders up. And okay, so that's beer glass two, and the final one that we just did is number three. So you can compare these renders. That was the first one. This was the second one. And there's the third one. So subtle differences between them. Um, I kind of like it where we're a little bit further away from the glass maybe than, 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 than the close-in um, view. Um, you can see that the foam on this one was a little bit harsh, so it's been toned down slightly over here. And then on the final render here, we've added in the bubbles. So uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel if you found these tutorials useful. And I'll see you next time.